first, you need to know how to get to manage reports, which is where we're going to create our reports. So we're going to go from our home summary page, we're going to go to settings, and then we're going to go all settings. Now you might wonder why I'm not going to reports. And the answer to that I is- I was going to ask that, yeah. It takes the same number of steps, and it's just an old preference of mine to get to go through the settings page. I've been using SolarWinds Orion for a very long time and uh, finding things through the setting pages, these these menus did not exist. And now that they do, I find myself just going back and forth to the old settings pages. Um, so it's a Got little it. bit more manageable to me because we want to go into manage reports. The reports um, menu up here takes you into viewing reports. So you still have to go to manage reports from there. Um, so we're going to go into our alerts and reports section here and we're going to select manage reports. And we're going to see there's like a ton of out of the box reports, but we're not going to use any of those. What we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new report. And this report's going to be very simple. Um, so you see immediately we popped up a screen because I've either never been in this screen before on, our, on this Orion instance in the account that I'm logged in, or I've just never checked this box to never show this again. So what we want to do is you can see here there's a lot of information that says, you know, some basic stuff of what you can do. Um, and then you can just click on the get started because we don't need that. Um, there's a lot of options jumping right in. and. A lot of people are inclined to maybe ignore this or they'll take a little gander and see what's in there. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Right now, we're going to use the reports resources. We're going to use the custom table. Now, you can use the custom table. You can use custom chart. The custom chart is a little bit um, more advanced only because you do require a time series. It's a little fidgety when you try to do something very specifically custom. Um, so we're going to use the custom table. And it's going to take us right into adding that content. So you have a few options here for selecting uh, your methods. So you can select specific objects. So we can go in here and say, I want node X and node Y only. I don't care about anything else. You can use the dynamic query builder, which is the default, or you can use the advanced database query with SQL or Swiggle. And um, we're not going to get into that right now. I'm going to talk about it a little tiny bit later, but it's a little more advanced than what I want to get into in this session. So we're going to leave it on the dynamic query builder. You have two options, basic selector and advanced selector. You can see already, I want to report on node. It's going to automatically select all nodes. Do we want to select all nodes? Yes, but also we want to add a condition. So we're going to add a condition and I'm going to change this because the report that I want to create is based on interfaces. So we're going to come in here and we're going to find interface and we're going to change it to interface. Now it's going to select all interfaces and that's not what we want. I'm going to tell you what we're going to look for today. What we're going to look for is interfaces that have been re-indexed. A lot of times you'll notice, or you may not have ever noticed in your Ryan instance that you have orphaned interfaces, they're unknown. Most of the time that comes about from an interface being re-indexed. So it changes to a negative index value and that forces it to be orphaned by Orion. So you're no longer gonna be collecting your statistics on that interface. It could be an important interface, I don't know. So what I like to do as kind of a cleanup tool is I like to create a report that tells me when I have orphaned interfaces so I can go rediscover them and add them to my environment. And you could also do that with a um, regular network discovery to regularly add your new interfaces in. but it's still nice to be able to go in there and clean up the old ones that no longer matter. Right, and, and I wanna point out for those folks who come from a network background that you may be aware that there's a Cisco IOS command that caught, forces ne your network devices not to re-index, to keep their index number no matter what else changes. However, not all devices have that capability. So other operating systems and other uh, network vendors don't always have that do not re-index. And so this report really allows you to know when uh, important interfaces have dropped off the list or are no longer collecting stats. I, yes, absolutely. So you'll notice too, I mentioned the basic selector and the advanced selector. The basic selector is gonna give you drop down field. This is all it's gonna let me do. This doesn't do what I need it to do. There's no information here for the interface index this is what I need to look for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it to the advanced selector. What that's gonna do is give me a, now a button and I'm gonna select that button and I can now select anything I want from the database that is related to this table in the database. So what I want is I want to find this interface index field right here. You can use the search up top, but what I want to do is I want to just use interface index. So we're going to select it and add that. And we're going to say is less than 
zero because it becomes a negative value in the database. I happen to know this just by working with it for a very long time. You may not have known this ahead of time. Right. And the other thing is that if you're used to creating custom alerts, which I think more people generally when they're getting started with Orion end up creating alerts uh, again sooner than they have to create a custom report, then yeah. the interfaces look a lot similar when you go to that advanced uh, selector. Yes, absolutely. Um, so then we can name it. So we're going to name our data source. And the reason why you want to name your data sources is if you eventually do want to add more resources to this report, you can select from the drop down of data sources for your new resources. So you don't have to recreate them. So if you're later, later, you've been messing around with reports for a really long time and you get more comfortable, you can add different data type sets. And if they're named, you know what they are. So we're going to name it mm -hmm. uh, re-indexed interfaces because that tells me what I need to know. And add to layout. And it is gonna immediately jump us into editing that custom table. So we're gonna select what fields we want in here. We're gonna add some columns and I wanna add, I'm gonna add from my interfaces, which is automatically deselected. We're gonna select caption because we want the name of it. And I'm gonna add the interface index just to show you what that kind of looks like. Um, and then I'm also going to add the status, um, which is down here. I'm gonna add the status so that you know what that interface status is. And then I'm also gonna go in here and I'm gonna change this to a different property that's connected, which is our node, because I wanna know what device this is attached to. An interface name is all well and good, but without a node device name, you're not gonna know what that's from. A lot of them are gonna be the same. You know, you've got your fast ethernet and then you're gonna be like, well, who, what device does this go to? That's not helpful for me. <laughs> yeah. WAN port one, where? Which one? Yeah. So we're gonna select our fields. These are all the fields that I wanna add and I'm gonna hit add column. So now that they've been added, you can see there's two caption fields and that's not gonna make any sense later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rearrange a little bit. So I'll drag and drop, it's very lovely. And I'm gonna select advanced and then I'm gonna rename this. So you can see this is the field in the database, it's node caption. So what I'm gonna say is this is our node name. And then in the interfaces one, I'm gonna rename that one to interface name. You guessed it. Great, and then I can name our table. And I'm just gonna stick with the same name because that is what it is. Yeah, don't get creative and call something like Blue Mountain Hamsters. Like really yep. name things what they are. It's, yeah. You're not gonna appreciate, future you is gonna hate present you if you start doing something cutesy. Yeah, absolutely. You'll be so confused later. Or if you leave the company, then some poor soul who has to come in there afterwards, it's gonna be very confused. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna correct that. We're gonna talk a little bit more about some of these other options later, but you can use this preview resource to see what it's gonna look like. You know, just pop up right on the screen for us. And this is what it's gonna end up looking like. And submit. So you'll notice that the first thing I did wasn't name my report. The first thing it had me do was add things and that's by default. So now we need to name it. You can add a subtitle, you can, uh, which can be like more of a more descriptive uh, information if you need it, or it can be like a time range. I've used that if I build reports that are like monthly, yearly, you know, they're, they're on a time, time frame, then I'll come in here, I'll name them basically the same, then I'll put their time frame in the subtitle or something like that. Um, or if you wanted to add, I don't know, anything else in there, you could. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump to our finished report so you can see what it looks like. Now, this is, this is good information. This is information that tells me that these devices have lost those interfaces. Maybe they've, maybe they've been re-added and we need to go in here and we need to clean these up because they're not collecting statistical information, they're not collecting status anymore, and they're not useful to us in our monitoring. We need to go add the new ones that are useful to us.